everyone welcome to the charvak podcast this is your host kushal mehra my guest today is shiv kunal verma shiv kumal ji kunal ji is a indian military historian a documentary filmmaker and an author of multiple books but today we are going to talk about his latest book life of an hindustani 6 degrees of separation uh, verma ji thanks for coming on the podcast my pleasure ji bilkul thank you for having me here So, पहले मुझे आपसे ये पूछना था ये नाम लाइफ ऑफ एन हिंदुस्तानी इसके पीछे बताइए क्या ये डिसीजन था ये 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 फंडा क्या बाद में समझेंगे सिक्स डिग्रीज ऑफ सेपरेशन क्या है पहले हिंदुस्तानी क्या वाला नाम क्यों चुना you know, सबसे बड़ा हिंदुस्तानी नहीं है हिंदुस्तानी है वो चाहे आप देखिए ऐसा है बहुत सारे हिंदुस्तानी है बहुत सारे पाकिस्तानी है बहुत सारे अफगानिस्तानी है खालिस्तानी भी है हमने सोचा हिंदुस्तानी भी मार देते हैं बीच में देखेंगे क्या होता है basically in my view that one word is reflects what the ethos of even the armed forces is which is kind of a political secular um, you be who you are you can be as religious as you like you can do whatever but you know you are and we are all from the indus and the ganjo gan gangetic indus indus belt so it made we didn't think too much about it it just sounded right so we went with it but uh, yeah i कई बार ना कोई नाम बैठ जाता है आके और ये बिल्कुल बैठ गया तो हमने उसको ज्यादा सोचा नहीं ज्यादा सोचोगे तो and uh, my own experience in life is that the original title is the one which stays so kya idhar udhar ghoom gham ke aa jao par wohi wala hai ga 60 degrees of separation because everything in life eventually is connected you look up try idhar se dekho udhar se dekho koi connection nikal aata hai and uh, uh, that's why it, i kind of like that but then 6 degrees of separation is also a very famous film and uh, i you know usme there would have been a conflict of interest etc so then that is why we actually started looking for a larger more central title and hindustani came and then we wanted to retain 6 degrees of separation uh so you know without those linkages in life whether they are family or friends or whatever you know you aap kahi bhi jaiye kuch na kuch connection zarur niklega aap se agar thoda main 10 minute aur khod ke hum baat karenge to dekhenge koi na koi hamare vakam nikal aayenge aur kuch na kuch who knows you might even be my second or third or fourth cousin <laughs> you know it's kind of crazy okay so your previous आपको सिक्स या तीन या चार डिग्री में कोई मिल जाएगा वैसे हम लोग अमृतसर से आई वो आप कहा से हो आस पास हिस्टोरिकल अकाउंट ऑफ मल्टीपल स्टोरीज ऑफ इंडिया शेयर through your life journey parallelly so in terms of just a writing experience of what work you've done in the past in comparison to this book if i was to ask you from just purely from a technical writing perspective which one was easier which one was harder or both are equally easy or both are equally hard well 62 ke baad 65 bhi likhi hui hai western sunrise yeah wo mere wo mere hisab se sabse mushkil kitab thi because wo usme bahut sare angle se autobiography to fairly asaan thi because you basically have i just had to make very sure all my facts were right and being a filmmaker and also having the fact the fact that i have fairly detailed notes of that entire period made uh, that fairly easy uh, though of course when you are trying to do a book of that type i didn't particularly want to write the autobiography because i basically feel autobiographies are a ego trip yeah. and uh, ya to it's a wo hai puti kismat series mein jo aa jati hai na ki hai agar main ye nahi hota to main ye hota उस कैटेगरी में आती हैं या यू आर समबडी हु इज लाइक यू नो तेंदुलकर और राहुल द्रविड और यू नो सम जनरल वीके सिंह यू नो पीपल हु हैड 
been in 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 the limelight and they've got a lot to share which is fine uh i purely though it's an autobiography it's actually as you have come but you said that very aptly the it is actually a contemporary history it's a look at contemporary history and that's the reason i've actually written it that's why i started with the secrets also because it's a uh, the book doesn't it does of course what i feel and what i do but i don't really dwell on that too much i'm not getting you know too much into what the emotional angles of the whole thing were so in the it had to be an autobiography because otherwise there's no other way of doing it uh in my view i mean i'm sure there are ways of doing it but this made the maximum sense and jab ek bari likhne lage to fir i was pushed into it by my publishers and uh, they really went for it hammer and tong ki bhaiya ye aapne likhni hai maine pehle bhi ek likhi hui hai jo general vk singh ki autobiography thi courage and conviction which was published by alok so i knew what it entails and how much work hard work it takes but in to answer your question very directly between 1962 1965 and hindustani each book is different it's like saying ki teen bachche hain kiski labor pain jyadi thi sabhi ki ek jaisi hoti hai aur jab aap kaam kar rahe ho us pe tab to it it seem kabhi khatam bhi nahi hogi but uh, eventually it i think it has come out the way I, on the scale of where i wanted it it's probably out of 10 etc around 9 it is as good as it gets in my view okay, th- this particular bit in uh, in in the chapter titled guns and roses the fall of a barbet aapne likha hai all this talk of freedom and liberty good versus evil goes out of the window when it comes to themselves my mother would say of the united states it's a genocide that's what it is she then explained to me and my sister what the word meant her generation victims of partition just a quarter of a century earlier knew exactly what it meant to be displaced and the people butchered all around them with war now a distinct possibility every evening my mother would join the other wives as they covered their heads and said whatever prayers they could think to keep uh, to uh, off to keep their husbands alive in days to come now this this thing about americans is very interesting i recently had two three podcasts where i did you know in fact one was a complete a complete podcast dedicated to this whole uh, you know global values based liberal order in your years of journalism you know you you are a historian of multiple conflicts in india you have covered many things from as they say right in front of your eyes what do you make of this entire shenanigan that we constantly talk about and especially the americans go about bandying all the time well i uh, spent a year there because my father was in the us army doing the fort benning may allied officers course 1968 1969 no saal ka tha us time so you are fairly impressionable at that age and you see a lot and uh, i one of the things which used to strike me was that there was a lot of talk about liberty and freedom and uh, uh, you know, there was all the right kind of slogan slogans going on but that was also the height of the vietnam war and we were in fort benning and fort benning is there was that time the 101 airborne division headquarters also you know, thousands of helicopters you could see the bodies being brought back in body bags so we were right you know as you said it was all unfolding in front of our eyes and we saw the americans you know every time with their bands and their bodies being brought and salutes and flags and even in our classrooms they used to, they were very the american flag was all over the place it was uh, in at the un dino mein hindustan mein aap jhanda nahi laga sakte the हमारे लिए तो ये कल्चर शौक आया था बिल्कुल क्योंकि हम तो ये क्या हो रहा है यू नो दैट कैंड ऑफ थिंग रोज सुबह हाथ पे हाथ रख के खड़े हो जाना और यू नो स्टार स्प्रैंगल बैनर दिस दैट सो बट एट द सेम टाइम वियतनाम वाज ऑन एंड माय डैड वाज ऑफ कोर्स वेरी मच पार्ट ऑफ दी हिज कोर्स वाज गोइंग ऑन बट माय मदर वाज ऑलवेज वेरी प्रैगमेटिक एंड यू नो आई थिंक शी हैड हर फैमिली वाज ओरिजिनली फ्रॉम अमृतसर देन देयर वांट टू लिव अ बेसिकली इन लाहौर एंड दे हैड had the rough end of it so i think she empathized a lot with the vietnamese people and she used to constantly keep us pretty grounded she used to actually humko baith ke samjhana ki dekho ye hai ye television pe aa raha hai i mean she used to as a nine year old i i remember get telling she telling me don't always believe what is on the telly and don't forget there are western reporters who are reporting to you and stuff like that in fact it's interesting because some of those reporters 
like Sidney Shamberg, you know, he he was later with 18 Rajput during the 71 war. And then even when I was very briefly with AP for that two years, I interacted with him. So uh, one actually got to see a lot of this. And one thing as far as the United States is concerned, uh, which I, uh, as a person who's been specializing in geo geopolitics and military history, with the Americans, there's no such thing as a free lunch. I mean, they whoever's gone to bed with them has got very badly burned. And they have got away with murder time and again. And, you know, uh, uh, what happened in Iraq, what happened in Syria, what happened in Libya. Uh, so when they preach to the rest of the world about this and that, you have to take it not with a pinch of salt, but a whole sack of salt. So that perspective because unfortunately all our families now, everybody wants to go to the United States, study there, settle there. So we have, we have an emotional connect. I mean, how many of us have an emotional connect with Russia or with any other country, you know? Yeah. it's Everybody has family in the US. So, you know, it's a part of the same thing. Even the diaspora works on your brain. But let's not get emotional about these things because eventually, and especially when it comes to India's position in this area, and since I'm also dealing a lot with China, we have to remember, well, ironically, I can only quote President Roosevelt, you have to walk alone, you better carry a huge stick here. Yeah. And that stick can only be your own. Don't bank on the Yanks. They're not going to help you. Mm, that's true. And and uh, that that's uh, that's actually kind of, uh, you know, the thing uh, they, I, I forgot, uh, you know, the, it's the, it's, I'm paraphrasing, like one of the American leaders had said the, uh, uh, or very famous Americans had said it's, the worst thing you can do is very good, be very good friends with the Americans <laughs> because that, that's the worst thing you can do. <laughs> because their interests are of a level which, uh, I mean, they will always do what is what they feel. You see, what I, I have always felt that the way things are, during 1962, they, they even 62 happened to a certain extent because of CIA pushing certain things through Malik. It all, uh, sorry, I, uh, you know, it just created a huge, huge, huge problem for them. And uh, for, for us, even though U-2 flights, which went from Kalai Kunda, um, the arms which were given to the Chang, Chang rebels, the fact that the Dalai Lama was brought out by the CIA. But when actually fought, okay, they held your hand. But then immediately they were also part of the Anglo-Saxon group, where the British started adding their bit, ki bhaiya, link it to Pakistan. And then eventually what happened was that they completely shifted base to Pakistan. They had already shifted in 56 when Eisenhower came. So, in ki jo geopolitical ambitions there, wo humko us time samaj bhi nahi aari thi. It took us a while to understand exactly what they are doing. Because we were a young country. It's not, it's easy to look back and say our people should have known better. But they didn't know better because uh, they were not in that kind of position of power to understand these things. It took us a while to understand it. But even after understanding it, then you, the Americans and the West in particular, you also end up getting compromised because everybody, as I said, has family. Kisi ki beti pad rahi, kisi ko scholarship de diya, kisi ko ye kar diya, kisi ko wo kar diya. So, koi kuch bola mi nahi chata na, ki kal vizai nahi milega. I mean, it's like, that's at the back of everybody's mind. So, yeah, that's unfortunate, but it's true. All right. So now, can you tell? What's with the green trousers and Dune School? Ye ye wali kahani batao aap. Ye to, mere ko zindagi bhar ke liye branded ho gaya tha main. See, my during the war in seventy, I went to Dune School immediately after the war. Seventy one December, we were in Dhaka actually when the surrender and all that happened. And then I came back and I'm fiercely proud of the fact that my dad was from the army and. My mother had cut up my own cake, green corduroy pants. I never had anything with this. So when I came in, there was a Sadarji standing there. Uh, we call him Gopal Sir. So I just stepped into Hyderabad house, which I had been assigned to. So I looked at this guy. And I mean, I was now in 72, I was 11 years old at that time. And ye guruji 16 saal ke the daadi wadi nikalai thi to humko to we were down to his crotch level <laughs> you looking up at this scary looking guy and uh, he asked me this why you wearing green trousers main kaha my dad main bade proudly bola bhaiya mere piraji ki hai hero of bangladesh war ye wo 
वो उसने कहा अच्छा भैया तुम्हारा नाम आज से राइफल मैन फौजदार सिंह या कुछ रख दिया उसने शुक्र शुक्र है वो फौजी हो गया बाद में नहीं तो उसने तो बड़ा अपनी तरफ से बड़ा इंजीनियर अपना ब्रेन अप्लाई किया था बट उन स्कूल में हर एक को वी ऑल हैड निक नेम्स एंड आई मच रहा बी अ फौजी देन हलवाई और चिकू और पटेटो सिल्वर लाइनिंग इन फैक्ट नो बडी फॉर लॉन्ग टाइम आफ्टर आई पास आउट ऑफ स्कूल नो बडी न्यू माई रियल नेम हमारे uh restricted to do school this is true everywhere yaar yeah, it's a it's a form of a hierarchy jisko aap jitna ganda naam de sakte ho dekh ke uske naak ko lagad do zameen pe wohi wohi hota hai but uh, yeah that's, that's so true yeah now the, this this particular title stood out to me um in your book you you talk about an article you wrote for the mcc magazine which you called the pseudo society now i love by the way i love the title and the framing of it i want to talk a little bit about it like uh, where did you think about it like what made you call this uh, this entire title to explain what you were writing the pseudo society i want to i i want to discuss this because i love the title see i in in mcc when i landed up in uh, two or three things happened one uh, uh kushal was that uh, when you come from an environment like a public school ja har ek cheez is controlled by ghanti ghanti bajti aap bistar ke bahar aap sochte nahi hai your feet are not out and if you are not hitting the ground you will get a punishment so you run you are constantly running so from that kind of discipline you walk into a college environment when nobody gives a damn ya tum aao na aao to wahan pe kya hota hai and especially uh, i've noticed this with a lot of public school guys who were mainly from lovedale in this case because they were coming from pomuti and these areas they, when the discipline is removed the freedom leads to a complete breakdown of the individual initially sabke sath hota hai and uh, mcc madras christian college had a very high element of i won't say serious drugs but they were like on you know uh, a lot of pot used to be smoked and it was almost par for course i mean you everybody seemed to be doing it and uh, i was i suppose i would have gone the same way but for the fact that i was also a tennis player and i got very involved in uh, you know whatever mcc's tennis uh, scenario was and i st- i used to smoke cigarettes but that was it and i used to smoke quite a lot of cigarettes but even those used to harm me because i before every match i would tell my team i should at four days before they stop smoking and you could actually tell the difference because you see when you're playing in, in the heat of tamil nadu etc it's the the toll on the body used to be very very strong and even knowing all that you still go back after the match start right up again etc i also felt that a lot of the guys were getting into drugs and they were it was kind of you know it it just it it became a kind of a peer peer pressure kind of a thing and it was and the, the more they were into it the guys were more heavily into it they had a kind of a cult image around them and it was all such such pseudo nonsense i mean it was not funny so that article was actually written literally off the cuff Uh, I wasn't thinking too much about it. I bet he liked it. It's a big deal, and it just carried on. Yeah. So I, I, I think you know, pseudo society though. Uh, it just it wasn't. It was the title may have been off the cuff. But the, the the thought behind it certainly wasn't. I felt there was a lot of uh, such good talent. You know, I mean, you know, these guys were some of them were so bloody good, and it was such a waste to see them just. waste all their time just doing this kind of a thing i i have always felt that and i even now i'm quite involved with velum boys and i have quite a lot to do because of this military history seminars which we run every year i keep telling every child i say look 5 6 saal jo aapko mil rahe hai na ye institution hai notes to usko take what you can out of it you're not just going there to bloody gaze vacantly into the sky and waste your father's money and and you know become a great hero because you can smoke this or you can buy that or do this and it's not worth it get every 60 seconds of distance run nahi to tum jo wasting baad mein pasta ho gaya apna school life dekh lo ye bhi karna chahiye tha wo bhi karna chahiye tha wo sab past tense mein na wo opportunity phir thodi na aayegi 
True, true, true. Now I want to talk about this and I'm going to read the entire page from Nepal and Ladakh, India Today and AP. Um, I'm going to read this because this really, uh, I'm obsessed with Operation Blue Star and everything that has happened in Punjab because of multiple reasons. Operation Blue Star was a botched up exercise in planning right from the word go. And one man was responsible for the entire fiasco. Two days previously, Major Later, General Vijay Kumar Singh had accompanied his immediate boss, the Director General Military Operation DGMO, Lieutenant General C.M. Somanna, and the Chief of Army Staff, General Arun Sridhar Vedya, to Indira Gandhi's residence. The situation in Punjab was critical, but both the senior officers was clear, were clear. A frontal attack on the Golden Temple complex by the Indian Army was out of the question. Just then driving in from Chandigarh, obviously at the Prime Minister's direct invitation, the Western Army Commander Lieutenant General Sundarji had arrived and other than throwing the mandatory salute to acknowledge the Army Chief had blatantly taken a stance contrary to that of his own boss and the DGMO and told Indira Gandhi he would clear up the complex in a few hours if she ordered. The moment General Sundarji decided to pull the carpet from under the COS's feet, Military logic had been compromised and each subsequent discussion, a decision was then guided by political rather than military compuls- compulsions. I want to spend some time about this. Let us talk about Blue Star. This is quite a, I would say, a startling statement to make uh, about an operation that has, if you are a Punjabi, I mean, a Punjabi, I'm Punjab se you will not have one family who has not suffered the brutality of uh, pre-84 or post-84. So let us talk about this. So can you share the entire history of Blue Star with us now? Th- because this really moved me when I was reading your book. See, um, there were two other elements to this. I was uh, at that time My father was also the brigadum in 11 Corps, which was in Jalandhar. And uh, he was sitting right there. And 11 Corps uh, has three divisions, as you probably know. 15 Division, which is based in Amritsar. Then there's uh, 7 Division, which is near Firozpur. And uh, one more is your Jampi B. So, this whole sector was under him and Brigadam means he was in charge of logistics and everything, etc. Uh, that is the time I was still with India today and I had been into the Golden Temple. Mainly it used to be handled by Shekhar Gupta but for, for India today. But one day I went in there and one day I suddenly came face to face with Mr. Binderwale. And uh, he had done that little thing of pulling out a pistol and you know putting it in my mouth and tuck, tuck. Oh, we used to do that. You knew it's not loaded. Nobody's going to shoot you in an open area. So, and then when you stand up to that, there was a lot of, you know, usual. Later, when I was with AP, I was covering Punjab and there was a, I knew most of these guys pretty well. Yeah, They were youngsters. They were not particularly driven by any major religious ideology or anything. It was just the power of the gun and, you know, having all this. It was thick, whatever the, that aspect was. Now, for a month or so, I was away in Assam. And uh, just when I came back to Calcutta, there was a lot of noise. Ki, spate of phone calls. We didn't have cell phones or anything. Getting through was quite a job. So I was out in Assam. Uh, and uh, when I came back, I was told that you have to come to get to Chandigarh as soon as possible. This is the beginning of uh, June. Uh, so the Buddy Barish Hori, it was. Teen char feet pani tha. Loudon Street me the. Ham Calcutta me. I was uh, there staying with Bush Datta. His daughter Brinda. She dro- got me to the airport. How she got me to the airport is another story. They, they, we couldn't even see the road yet. So much water. And they landed the A three hundred because the Indian Airlines had been told to get me there. I got to Delhi. I got into um, Chandigarh. I had this very very brief meeting with General Sundarji, um, where I was really left wondering why he called me. And I told him, I said, sir, it is a ye hai, ye hai. but he didn't want to hear that. And the impression I got was that here was a man who was simply thinking, 
And if you look at the way the operation subsequently unfolded, that is exactly that that credence is. I mean, that is a General Bulbul Barar who was commanding uh, Nine Division, which came from Merit and conducted the operation. The level of intelligence he had, he himself has documented it. He said, "I didn't even know that there were so many pilgrims in the room. There will be so many pilgrims in the room. There will be so Basic information was missing. And without intelligence, how the hell can you go in? This particular quoting of what happened in uh, the Prime Minister's residence, because I've written General Vika's autobiography, I was privy to this particular bit of information as to what had happened. So the, in the entire book, if there is one thing which I've taken where I was not personally present, it is this. But because I, in fact, I was acknowledging this day before yesterday when we, were, when we had the General with us. So I was also aware of the background over there. Uh, General Sunaji was a very uh, dynamic personality. And he was awfully good to me. I mean, I had a lot to do with him later on that wildlife thing also. And he was also from Madras Christian College. So we had that little bond. But he was always uh, too much of a, he was in too much of a hurry. He was full of bluster. And if you said something which he didn't agree with, he would immediately switch you out, tuck. So, you know, and when you get to that level of, when you reach that point in, in the hierarchy and people realize that if you have to say something, then you will not be relevant. You will side on the side and then you will That's another form of mismanagement, you know, and that is exactly what happened. And when he came in and he told Mrs. Gandhi, I can do this in five hours. I mean, you know, two hours I will clean it up. Now, firstly, the Prime Minister made the biggest mistake. Her father had done that. He had taken general call and placed him in a position where he kind of superseded both the thinking of Bogi Sen and General Thapar. So you created a, so this is, she may have done certain things right in 71, but in 1984, she's made exactly the same mistake. She's circumvented the hierarchy. The moment you circumvent the hierarchy, DGM or Bevkuf nahi hai yaar. He's telling you that, ma'am, a frontal assault is not possible. General Somana was a Kurgi officer. He, he, he himself, you know, all these guys know their job. It's, and they are talking not as individuals. They're talking because they've done an institutional look at the, the problem. And they are telling you that the DGMO is not Somana who's speaking. He's the DGMO who's speaking. So they, you have to give him weight. Arun Vedya was a double MBC. He's from the Deccan horse. He fought. He got a Mahavir Chakra in 65 or Mahavir Chakra in 71. He is your chief of army staff. Usko aap side kar rahe hain kyunki General Sundarji aake, General Sundarji ho very flamboyant. Ke bolne ka style hi ho. Unho ne uđa diya usko. Aur uska price I feel we paid very very heavy price. And in fact, you know, being from a Sikh family myself, I mean, you know, the pain, the horror of what actually happened is, is so alive. It doesn't really, even time doesn't really fade it. You're right, all families of ours have been impacted and uh, it's a credit to the community that we have picked up the pieces and tried to carry on. Yeah, which is why uh, I get very worried about, you know, every time something happens in Punjab is because jinnon ne wo story ani suni hui hai. Even see, I was born and raised in Mumbai. My father was born and raised in Mumbai. But you have family in Punjab. The bond doesn't go. You still have family in Punjab. You have people living in Punjab. And the horror stories you hear of uh, 70s, 80s and 90s. I mean, another thing that bothers me about Punjabi culture, I don't know if you'll agree with me, is that the uniqueness of Punjabi culture, and this is I'm saying in a bad way, is that Punjabi culture is obsessed with form machismo. It is, it is a bimari of the entire Punjabi culture. I'm not talking about Sikh or Hindu, just Punjabiyat in general. Mm. It is it is laced with form machismo. And uh, whether it was what, what Pindranwale did or uh, whether it, it is with a lot of young kids that I see in Canada and their influence in, in India, it, it, is, uh, it has a lot to do with this rotten culture of formachismo, which is uh, indicated through, which is the worst form of music. Uh, in terms of lyrics, I mean, rap and hip hop are amazing, but uh, Punjabi rap and hip hop are disgusting uh, from a lyrical perspective, and and it it, it it's just an overall degradation. I don't expect people to agree with me, but I have uh, seen former cheese more destroying Punjabiyat. To be very honest, you got a point. 
your point and uh, in any case hum to us generation ke hain jahan pe jis gali mein tera ghar na ho balna wale lyrics were for leading the thing i think we all been romantic when you come to hip hop and you come to रैप शैप आपको तो कोई ऐसी समझ नहीं आता कि ये बोल क्या रहे बोलना तो बोलो गाना गाना आप आप बटालवी आप बटालवी और बुल्ले शाह को सुनते थे मैं भी बटालवी और बुल्ले शाह को सुनता हूँ मैं रैप और हिप हॉप भी सुनता हूँ मगर पॉइंट है कि सुनता मैं भी हूँ पर मेरे को उसको जो जो समझ नहीं पड़ता बोल के रहे गाना 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 गा यार बोलना है तो बोल वाई डोट यू सेट दू टू वन यू ट्राइन कमाइन इट टू मी डीबडी अच्छा I was back at work but after the SBI story was never comfortable with the environment beginning of July India Today carried another story on the blue star action and though it may have been a coincidence much of what I had said in my report was now a part of Shekhar's second version upset and angry I headed for the roof to smoke a cigarette but had instant stumbled upon Pramod Pushkarn duplicating my negatives particularly the shot of Bhindranwale's body When I asked him what he was doing, he had simply shrugged and said, "Don't blame me. I'm just following orders." Jara, iske upar light dalen, sir. Dekho, Shekhar, mera dost hota tha, hota hai, to tha, abhi bhi hai. Abhi whether he after the book comes out, if he still considers me his friend is a different <laughs> matter. But I hope you guys stay things. friends. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I uh, look professionally. There are certain things which uh, he was. in india today he was far senior to me at that time because i had just come from tiger top so i got a kind of a back door entry thanks to my uh, you know suman dube and arun puri thinking that the kind of work i had done in ladakh etc would give a different perspective to think so mera area thoda different tha but i was he was the kingpin as far as defense matters were concerned etc so he had the run of the thing but what had happened was that when i came back from amritsar after the blue star thing i knew the casualty figures because my dad was brigade i mean i'm ko to malum hai for me you have dead bodies nahi hai chup pa sakte ek cheez aap kafi saaf hai ki you can do a lot of things in the armed forces but you can't fight casualties in the indian scenario we are not china and stuff like that to mujhe malum tha ki 89 ya 93 jo bhi figures the us time yaad nahi aa raha तो जब मैं आया वापस तो मैंने सुमन दुबे को बोला कि ये ऐसा ऐसा है ऑफकोर्स फाइल माय रिपोर्ट आल्सो तो उस टाइम दिलीप बॉब वाज अ सीनियर कॉरेस्पॉन्डेंट वो तो लेट गया जमीन पे कि भैया फिक्स लाइन ऑफ फायर ये वो पाँच सौ लोग भी मरेंगे तो मैंने कहा क्या बात कर रहा है बट लेटर द कैरेट शेखर स्टोरी दैट राधर ड्रामेटिक इट इवन हैड आर्टिलरी गन्स फायरिंग फ्रॉम जलिया वाला बात If General Dyer couldn't get into uh, with his armored cars, artillery guns were also not going to get in. But nobody thought of that. And that uh, that story did well. That time, India today used to be a uh, bi-monthly. Uh, we had two fortnightly. And then they carried. उसके एक 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 इस भी छोड़ के I think there was a cover where they had that Kar Seva ka the rebuilding of the Akal Tak. उसमें उन्होंने ये फिर से story डाली थी. इसमें उन्होंने फिर sketches वैसे लिए थे. And most of the information of what I had said was being repeated. I don't now remember whether it was exactly paraphrased or not. I'm not saying that it was a lift off, but uh, I I felt very peeved peeved about it. Ye Bhindarwale's body. There was only one shot, which I had got hold of. One army officer had shared it with me, and I had it with me. So I had taken a shot off a shot. So I was got negative develop. Ho gaya tha. एंड uh, जब मैं ऊपर गया प्रमोद वॉज ऑल्सो वेरी गुड फ्रेंड या वो हमने पहली फर्स्ट स्टोरी आई डेड इन गुरुकुल कांगड़ी वॉज विद हिम तो जब मैं ऊपर गया सिगरेट पीने तो वहाँ पे गुरु जी अब वो नेगेटिव का शॉट ले रहे थे तो मैंने कहा ये क्या कर रहे हो यार तो वो थोड़ा चलो अब ऑल दैट इज हिस्ट्री नाउ बट इट लेफ्ट मी आई कैम बैक एन आई एक्चुअली पुट इन माई रेसिग्नेशन आफ्टर दैट कि भैया मेरे यहाँ नहीं काम करना ठीक है आई ऑल्सो मेड सम मिस्टेक्स एट दैट टाइम आई सपोज वी ऑल यंग है ट्वेंटी थ्री ईयर ओल्ड तेईस साल के थे वर्ल्ड 
responsibilities seem to be on your shoulders at that time, especially when you go through something like uh, uh, the events around Blue Star, etc. Yeah, and what used to constantly play in my head was how unnecessary, how unnecessary, how unnecessary. And there was an incident, you know, I don't think I've talked about it in the book. Immediately, all the jatha started to form up and started to close in on Amritsar. In fact, I believe the dust was so much that you could see it for miles. And uh, there was, there was years, so I don't think I've included it in the books. They put one helicopter, one army aviation helicopter, landed in front of one of the jathas. And this guy got out of the helicopter, the colonel, and he uh, immediately picked up the ring leaders. He said, you come to the helicopter, I'm going to show you what happened. And they took them around and they circled the thing. And open hawa se to, from the air, you could make out that the Harbinder Saab was intact, which it was. It had taken a few bullets, etc. But by and large, the Harbinder Saab was not damaged at all. Kal uh, everything was rubble. So, uh, the Harbinder Saab was okay. And they dropped them back. Now imagine landing a helicopter with that kind of sentiment in front of a mob of millions. These guys could have been lynched. I think they should have got <laughs> Parambir Chakra. So I had the guts to do a thing like that. And when the leaders saw what had happened, they landed and then they told the people, Ki, Anji, hai, Arvindar Sahib is okay, go home. So those mobs went off. And then they picked up the other Jathas and the other guys. And they kept flying them around and showing them the whole thing. A lot of very, very... Uh, it's a very tragic time of our lives, yeah. 84. Uh, what happened in Punjab? I mean, it should never, never, never happen again. It's the heart of India, yeah. It's a, and it, why, why just Punjab? Any part of India, you cannot, you cannot have something like this ever happen again. That's one of the reasons I have documented whatever I saw and whatever I do. Yeah. Now, now you also talk about this incident. I'm reading the excerpt. I want you to explain the carnage after that in Delhi and many other areas also. You say, courage under fire is one thing, but the group of Nirankaris was stoic in their reaction, looking straight in front and walking purposefully. Stones and broken bricks were hitting them on the head and bodies. And some of them were splattered in blood, but not one man broke ranks or tried to run. I believe it was their dignity that saved them. Had one person tried to run away or even fallen for that matter, the mob would have been on them and they would have been lynched. The group turned it to Willingdon Crescent, uh, later Mother Teresa Road, and thankfully, the hail of stones died down. What was this about? Firstly, I think I made a mistake here in the book because uh, this extract had been published uh, three days ago and somebody on uh, Twitter pointed out to me that they couldn't have been Nirankaris because they were wearing blue turbans. Mm. Um, so they were probably Khalsas. But uh, mm -hmm. one presumed uh, they were, uh, I don't remember why we thought they were Nirankaris, but this, I've, I'm probably wrong. I'm not sure. So, because they definitely had blue turbans. Now, what had happened was, I was actually standing, I just reached Raj, uh, Rajiv Gandhi. I'd kind of gone across Mrs. Gandhi's body was in state on a platform like that. So, I was saying, I'm so sorry when, when this this group reached the courtyard, the the the, the uh, veranda like thing, where the uh, body they are, and the crowd was filing past from there, and the dignitaries were going like this. And they, suddenly, these cries, yeah, khun ka badla, khun chalenge, ye wo, and you know, they started to actually attack these people in the porch itself. So Raji, bina soche samde, bilkul mera haath chhodke, sida, he just waded into the crowd. Nahi, nahi, aise, nahi, I still remember those words. And uh, he managed to calm things down there in the porch. But then these people had to walk. Now, if you three murti, gain, it's about 200 meters ke hai, till the main gate. And then there were three murti chok. So, when they were there, the crowd chup ho gaya tha. They were watching them. And there were about 14, 15, maybe 20 of them. I don't remember the exact number. And I was like walking behind them now. And I had a friend of mine with me, Leslie. And he had given me the camera. I was trying to take some shots. Into that teen murti ka roundabout, the hail of stones started. Bricks and stones and whatever. You know, you almost, I mean, it was like, film dekhi hai, 300 Spartans, jaate, wo sari arrows aati it was like that. And they were getting hit on the head, they were getting hit on the arm, but they maintained their dignity. And I tell you, 
Suddenly, those white kurtas were getting splotches of red. And, but they carried on. Billingham Crescent ki taraf se hote hai, ho, 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 se nikal gaye. Shukar hai. Aur agar ek banda bhi girta na, ye pura crowd bilkul surge karke unko maar deta ho. Haan pe. I mean, the lynching was becoming a, was the order of the day in those days. It was pathetic. And my respect for those guys was like, you know, look at these chaps. It was, it was a, you can't help but um, admire that kind of stoic. And they came, they came to pay their respects to Mrs. Gandhi's body as a group, knowing fully well that they can possibly get lynched, yet they came. Mm. So there were a lot of incidents like this here. And uh, what shocked me most during that period was that was that interaction, of course, with General Jamwal, because I had the list. Rajiv Gandhi went and made that amazing statement later, even a giant tree falls. Big tree falls. So, I think uh, a real dark chapter of our lives that uh, hopefully something like that will never happen again. But human beings being human beings and how, how ridiculously easily we get manipulated not necessarily, I mean, dead whole rats, whether they are in Ahmedabad, whether they are Hindu-Muslim rats, whether they are Sikh riots. I've, I've also covered Hindu-Muslim riots in Ahmedabad. And it's, it's just inane. Yeah, it's inane. People just, it's almost like they take their brains out and put it aside and start behaving like, uh, I won't use the word animals. Animals will never do a thing like that. It is almost a kind of, a, it's an insult here. Yeah. We've been put on this planet. We've been given the very uh, wonderful, bloody opportunity to do something. We are just seeing hell-bent on, on turn on each other and Keep going at it. Can, can you there. tell us? Can you tell us a little bit about BB Bimal Kaur? I was a little taken aback, you know, because I uh, she was she was the widow of uh, Bayan Singh, and she was raising the women's commando force. So so was the so I was told. I wasn't told too much. I was just told that you go with her and you stay with her for three four days. We'll have you picked up. Or Joe will go Mille Aiga, was the photo letter. So, Tiga, to Tele. And uh, she had mysteriously disappeared after Pian Singh had been uh, killed. And uh, uh, she was a nurse or something. And uh, she had two, three children. So she was obviously under arrest in some place. And then she mysteriously appears and then she's to raise this women's commando force. And then I've, I've documented how I was taken there, my own car switched over. Drivers were both wearing brown shoes, which was very indicative that they are obviously intelligence operators, whatever. Koi Khalsa driver ya koi bhi aapko brown jute ni penama milega in Punjab and which is a service guy. So that was obvious. She was very quiet. She never, she didn't say too much, considering the fact that I was cheek by jowl with her for four days, 24 hours. So even, you know, used to sleep under the same char- uh, mango tree outside Gadi ke saath wahan laga ke. And, jada ni boli, but ek bhi, not a single woman came to see her. And she was raising a women's commando force. All these youngsters would come. So I used to tell them, 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 I used to they were getting information from certain people. They were, it was a kind of a quid pro quo. They must have been, you know, so you're too junior and operative when you're told to do a job like that, you do it. Restricts in your mind. Yeah, yeah it does. And and unfortunate uh, reality of our, of our life is that, uh, that uh, we, we tend to only have the memories left and we can only post hoc analyze the impact of all these things. But yeah, why I spend so much time like I I'm I'm 
obviously I'm, I'm I am emotionally and uh, ethnically invested in this entire thing and you know whatever happened in Punjab I hope it never happens again and every time I see some things on on TV even now you know sometimes I I I recently I'm not going to take names here but I told one of my friends who is affiliated with the current dispensation in Punjab and I messaged him I was like aag se khel rahe ho mat khelo aag se khel rahe ho mat khelo ek baar hi wo jinni bottle se nikal jata hai na usko fir koi wapas nahi dal sakta nikalna aasan hai aur par wapas nahi dal sakte aap wahi koi ped ki taal kaatte hain baitho to kaat do par usko fir sir wapas grow nahi kar sakte na unless you go right back to the seeds and the root yeah kya karo hmm आर्मी कू स्टोरी एंड द जनरल वी के सिंह एज का वो जो पूरा सागा है आपने काफी डिटेल में उसके बारे में बताया हुआ है द आर्मी कू स्टोरी अगेन शेखर इज इन्वॉल्व देयर इन द आर्मी कू स्टोरी अगेन बट आई वांट टू फोकस मोर ऑन द जनरल वीके सिंह सागा लाइक व्हाट द हेल हैपेंड देयर आई मीन आई वाज रीडिंग योर बुक आई वाज लाइक हाउ कैन समथिंग लाइक दिस हैपन लाइक आई डोंट अंडरस्टैंड हाउ कैन दिस हैपन वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन आई डोंट थिंक जनरल वीके सिंह एवर अंडरस्टूड हाउ समथिंग लाइक दैट हैपेंड एंड आई थिंक हाफ द कंट्री डिडंट अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट हैपेंड टाइम्स and uh, he's very affectionate every time he meets me mere bahut sare log who were affectionate and met me jab bhi paate the aap mere ko thappad lagayenge wo baat dusri hai but uh, general vk's story was exactly the kind of thing that should never happen i mean here an whole establishment turns on a man for no rhyme or reason uh, till he became a lieutenant general you didn't have a problem you suddenly because you now needed to curtail his age from uh, his his tenure from 3 years to 2 years because you wanted certain people to succeed him you go into all these machinations and then what did you expect him to do oh, uh, in fact even the supreme court has asked him that question ki general sahab aap to pinnacle pe aa gaye ho ab aapko aur kya chahiye wahan pe aap ghar banana chahte ho kya that's what i think uh, the chief justice said to him which i think is a ridiculous statement and in fact later mr devasayam who was a ias officer who later Uh, was in initially in the army and he one of the ma- major social activists in the south he and i we actually moved the supreme court and we went back to them and we said listen institutional integrity you cannot do this for god's sake and us time bhi shekhar gupta ji bade style se hamare ek unhone national interest mein ek pura article likha us din subere ki how we guys are being communal why because we are saying that uh, uh, the whole thing is being manipulated and since uh, dr manmohan singh the prime minister the honorable prime minister uh general jj singh and the incoming chief of all sikhs we are being communal therefore throw it out that was the whole just uh, gist of the article shekhar ko to hum gupta bolte nahi hai he now known as shekhar gupta as far as we are concerned and i think that name has really stuck just as for ji stuck in my case uska naam ab gupta ji ho gaya i went to shekhar yeah shekhar being a friend i went to him. i went to his office and bade pyar se mila aur haath pakad ke तीन घंटे मेरे को वहां पे सबसे मिलाया मनु पबी से मिलो रितु से मिलो सब जानता था इन लोगों को फिर भी ही टुक मी अराउंड द ऑफिस ये वो मैंने कहा शेखर तू कर क्या रहा है यार हैव यू लॉस्ट इट तो मुझे कहने लगा यू नो ही सारे सेइंग यू नो आई एम द हेड ऑफ अ न्यूज़पेपर मैं कोई कब नहीं हूं ये एक्चुअली टॉकिंग नॉनसेंस एंड ही ही द ही सेड इट टू मी ही सेड आई वाज इनवाइटेड बाय द जनरल फॉर ब्रेकफास्ट ही कॉल्ड सम हिंदी न्यूज़पेपर एडिटर मेरा स्टेटस ये वो उस लेवल पे बात कर रहा है 
देन देन आई सेड यू गेट इन माई गाड़ी आई हैड माई स्कॉपियो विद मी मैंने कहा बैठो मैं तुमको ले जाता हूँ तुम बैठो वहाँ पे प्लीज डू समथिंग अबाउट इट बिकॉज यू डूइंग सो मच डैमेज कहता चल मैं तेरे पीछे पीछे आ रहा हूँ मैं कहा यह कहाँ आएगा पीछे पीछे आई मीन आई ड्रॉप टू काम यू आई टोल जनरल एंड जनरल वी के गॉट डैम एंग्री विद मी से वाई डी गो टू इट बिकॉज ही विल सी इट एज अ साइन ऑफ वीकनेस मैं कहा सर मैं आई थॉट इट्स दू नो इफ आई पॉइंटेड आउट टू हेम मे बी ही सी वो नॉट वॉट द लॉजिक इज बट ऑब्वियसली द स्टेक्स वो हायर या दे वो दे वो पीपल बिहाइंड वी नाउ नो दैट मिस्टर चिदाम्बरम हैज वर्चुअली डिक्टेटेड दिस स्टोरी टू टू आ मैन शेखर एंड इज कैरेड इट any time im kaushal even right now while we are talking they bound to be troop movement around delhi kai kuch exercise ho rahi hogi koi gaadiyan idhar ja rahi hai koi gaadiyan udhar ja rahi hai koi tanks idhar ja rahe hota rehta hai 24 ghante hota hai ab aap delhi around delhi ncr ko define kariye na usme ambala bhi aa jata hai usme alwar bhi aa jata hai usme merit bhi aa jata hai kuch na kuch to ho raha hai na agar aap usme se bole ye ye tank jab barrel jara delhi ki taraf hai to ye coup hone wala hai i mean that kind of what shaker done And how could he do it? He is a guy who has been a defense correspondent. I mean, you are you are actually for the short-term benefits of whatever you want to achieve and embarrass a particular individual. You are questioning the institutional integrity of the whole nation out here. Entire the most important uh, wing of the of, of governance, which is the armed forces. You are suddenly putting it out there for 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 what? I mean, कुछ तो कुछ तो यार सोचो. तभी मैं गया उसके पास मैंने कहा यार अभी भी आ जा अभी भी बात कर ले यार सोलो योर ब्लडी ईगो इशू अ स्टेटमेंट सेइंग यू मेड अ ब्लडी मिस्टेक बट आई एम लिविंग इन अ फूल्स वर्ल्ड ना कौन बोला के बोलेगा कि हाँ जी मैंने गलती की व्हाट्स द डिफरेंस यार बिटवीन शेखर स्कू स्टोरी एंड दैट जर्नलिस्ट दिलीप नो मोर गॉड ब्लेस हु रोट अबाउट वाइल्ड डॉग्स फ्रॉम काना कमिंग इन ईटिंग डेड बॉडीज इन भोपाल यू आर लुकिंग सिंपली टू sensationalize and put that empty on and a guy like shekhar who otherwise is a very sensible and you know he 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 is respected i mean you know he he had well he was respected at one stage he had everything on a plate i mean he is a long standing editor of indian express courage journalism of courage you know theek hai but then they attacked when i after this i got attacked by them on two three occasions on one occasion Ritu Sarin rings me up from. Uh, she wanted to talk to General Vika. I said, "Look, I'm not his broker." I told her directly, "Talk to him. His number is on his phone. He's taking it." So she called me three or four times. I told her to go climb a tree. So the ne- next day, she puts it on the front page that Kunal Verma told me to, you know, climb a tree. I didn't obviously say climb a tree. I said something worse, but the fa- it was there. Who be red ink? Me wrote on it. I mean, you want to use the press just because you got unlimited ink as a weapon? Well. री वेल एंड थ्री एज नाउ एज समन हूज अ बुक ऑथर and who has dabbled in multiple genres in book authorship too which one is the toughest because you've gone in wildlife filmmaking and many other things like that too you made those kinds of documentaries too so which which one was a the most enjoyable and b the toughest enjoyable all i have always had a ball whatever i've done i've had great fun um filmmaking was well it probably was A different kind of a thing altogether. I mean, when we shot the first Air Force film, for example, um, there were no precedents here. How do we shoot? How do we get cameras into cockpits? That time we were talking about 16 millimeter. Yeah. So nothing to do with video. When I shot a car show there in Kargil, we were on video. We could see what we are doing. But here, I remember yeah, Air Marshal Natkarni was the ACS ops, and Ministry of Defence said that he has to convince you that he can eject in case there is a problem. and we drove to hindon and wahan pe gaye aur main baitha i strapped into a mig 23 and i sort of said ki sir in case i get the eject call i will unplug this battery battery is un dino mein itni badi badi hoti thi 10 10 kilo ki and i will throw the battery out i will do this i will do this and then i will eject and uh, he just smiled and he sort of smiled, wrote on that paper approved and all that and then we were driving back and he told me it is kunal do you realize that if you have an emergency in a cockpit you are not getting out buddy 
So I said, I know that, sir. So eventually I flew with six six cameras because I knew that there was no way to get out of it. But we had no options. Bhi nahi the, na. We, were, we didn't have the kind of resources like shooting Top Gun in Hollywood or something. And yet we were trying to make a movie which was a documentary which was like that. We had a great time. And uh, each film has, a, has its own challenges. Filmmaking, but the film that I really enjoyed making was the NDA film, The Standard Bearers, which even today is considered to be a benchmark film. After that, I made the IMA, then the LCA, then the LCA. I mean, I once had a great time yeah, with the Army, Air Force, Navy. Cargill War was itself a, a quite a quite an experience. But when you are writing a book, it's a completely different ballgame. Um, a, a book has its own life. You, once it's on your t- the day it goes to the publisher, it's got printed and it's gone. It's like a child leaving for college and then it's gone. I mean, you don't know where the hell it's going. It's going to create its own this thing. Um, you also obviously don't keep sitting and reading your own book, whereas at least your films, you do keep seeing snippets and stuff like that, you know, in various things. But uh, what is more satisfying in the fi- fi- ultimate analysis? Uh, they're both different. Again, it's like having different kids. Uh, which is the one that you favor over the other is a different story. Each one is very, very special. If it wasn't, it's not worth doing. Well, that, that That's a fair answer. But, uh, okay, so so what next? Ab, iske baad kya? Abhi, <laughs> we are working on value education. We are taking the three Northeast books and we've got three on South India and there are four on uh, wildlife which is North and East, Central and West, the Southern Peninsula. And the fourth wildlife book is the most exciting, which is the continental shells and the islands. And uh, then we have an 11th book, which is on the trans Himalayan region. And the 12th is on uh, illustrated military history. Now, this whole body of work as value education, we are now trying to put it out there for schools, universities, colleges, etc. Um, to sign up for and under the banner that taking India to Indians. And we are wanting this to be sort of added, not as a part of the curriculum, but as a kind of a limpet mind which you are attaching to the whole thing. And these are not encyclopedias, but they are actually a lot of work. They have some, they are, they are, I'm saying it myself, they're outstanding books. They act as windows. We want to actually impact the educational system in India, which I think we will. We are already working with certain, uh, there's one district which is uh, in Tamil Nadu, which is likely to now become a pilot district. A lot of universities are showing a lot of interest in it. A lot of schools are showing a lot of interest in it. And it is something which we are going to do. So it is taking up a lot of time and effort. Um, and as I said, Hindustani, uh, once it's left your desk, it's gone. Now your focus is on the on the next thing. So at the moment, they are a tot- there's another book coming out on Kashmir, which is real politics, which I'm writing with uh, Colonel Ajay Raina which will be out shortly. Wildlife short stories be So there are different genres also, which keep me at least alive. Because when I get fed up of writing one kind of a book, my idea of relaxation is switch from that, go work on wildlife for a while, and then come back and you feel quite refreshed. So yeah, I've got about 17 books at the moment under production. So uh, some of them are, are re- rewrites. Some of them are being revamped and redesigned. But yeah, it's a lot of work. Yeah, I don't know how many days I do महीने कहाँ गए साल कहाँ गया अभी 2022 खत्म होने वाला है my days are going so fast it's it's I just keep trying to slow time down होता नहीं that's it that that's a good thing it's always good to have work uh, Mr. Verma once again uh, uh, thanks for coming on the podcast it was a lot of fun uh, chatting with you and I wish you all the best for all your future endeavors thank you very much Kushal for having me on your podcast and uh, uh, look forward to interacting with you even off the this this platform. Thank you very much and thank you again for having me. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, we'll wrap today's discussion up. Once again, if, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening to this on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Audible, wherever you listen to it, in the description of the podcast, you'll see 
Mr. Vama's Twitter handle. You can follow him on social media. And also, I'll leave the link to buy the book. So please go and buy the book. Not just this book. You can buy his 62 book, 65 book. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know the drill. Please subscribe to the Chartbook Podcast YouTube channel. If you are an audio listener, please leave a rating on iTunes, on Spotify. You know, the more you leave a rating and um, do these things, the more the podcast gets distributed. That's how social media works. And if you want to become a member of the podcast, please become a member on YouTube or Fanmo or Patreon, or you can buy the merch on kushalmehra.com or send your donations directly through UPI2. I'll see you guys next time. Until then, namaste. Take care. Bye-bye.